Yo guys, what's going on? It is week two of the Seahawks season. Week one, we got a huge win against the Colts. Our offense played lights out throughout the entirety of the game, and obviously defensively, we looked really, really good as well. Our defensive line stepped up huge, especially towards the end of the game, because, you know, the Colts were starting to put together some really good drives, and every single time that, you know, it looked like they may have an opportunity to come back in the game, we had a great stop at the end of the game, especially by Darrell Taylor on that huge fourth down sack to essentially be able to seal that game for us. But this week we have another AFC South opponent, except this time it is going to be the Tennessee Titans. Now the Titans are coming off of what most people would probably say is a pretty disappointing week one loss for them. You know, the Cardinals really just dominated them in all the phases of the game. And the big thing for, that I took away from that game was how good Chandler Jones were was in that game you know Chandler Jones really did dominate that def offensive line and had five sacks in the first three quarters of the game including three sacks in the first quarter so I really think our defensive line you know if we're able to replicate that same amount of success that you know the Arizona Cardinals had it will be a very very good day for us Obviously, though, you know, the Titans are probably a bit better of an offensive team than what the Colts were. You know, the Titans have two of the best wide receivers in the game between A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. And then they also have Derrick Henry, who is coming off a very slow start to the season. But, you know, that is somebody that rushed for over 2,000 yards last year. So I'd be very surprised if that team didn't have a huge resurgence this upcoming week. I think the Seahawks are going to be in for a super test. Now, joining me today is going to be Ice. He goes by Don't Care by Ice or also George. This past tournament that we did play in, he ended up finishing third in it, which is his top ever finish in any MCS tournament. Now, Ice is also a three-time Jets Club champion, but the reason why Ice is representing the Titans today is he is a huge Titan fan. He just happens to live in New York, so... When he was playing in club series, he just did the team closest to him, which was the New York Jets, but he is a huge Titan fan. Ice, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hey, what's up? I'm doing all right. So what did you think about how the Titans played last week? We cannot go ahead and get into the game. Terrible. <laughs> That's, I mean, I got confidence they'll turn it around, but it was, it was really bad. Would you one think... of the mm -hmm. most disappointing Titans games in a while? Because they that's how it usually goes. They get your hopes up, and then oh man, then it usually goes bad. But then when they then when you're deep down and you think that you have no chance, that's actually when they play their best. So I actually hope or I think they have a good chance this week. Yeah, obviously one of your uh, bigger additions was Julio Jones. What did you think of uh, seeing Julio Jones in a Titan uniform for that first time last week? It was pretty cool. I think he only had like one or two catches, but uh, it was bad, bad game all around from a lot of guys, especially like Taylor Lewan. Chandler Jones was abusing him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, obviously uh, Taylor Lewan, uh, he did end up going on Twitter after the game and essentially just thanked Chandler Jones for essentially beating him up that bad throughout the game and said that it was just a huge wake up call to him in terms of his performance and everything. Obviously, Taylor Lewan is one of uh, the better offensive linemen throughout the league, so I would be very surprised if he didn't have a better performance this upcoming week. And, you know, I think, like, the big thing for me is having Derrick Henry in that huge explosive rushing offense last year. Were you surprised at how well the Cardinals defended the rushing attack for you guys? Yeah, I definitely was. Uh... I felt like the Titans were just too predictable, to be honest. Like, they were running against stacked boxes on first down and, like, putting themselves in, like, bad spots. And, honestly, instead of running to open up the pass like they were doing in previous years, I felt like they should have started, came out throwing to open up the run, if that makes enough sense. Because mm -hmm. the stacked boxes were just killing them. Yeah, especially with uh, Ryan Tannehill, who I know we've talked a lot about, me and you guys. You know, he's probably one of the more underappreciated quarterbacks within the league and everything. If you look at kind of just the start of Tannehill's career, you know, you're definitely seeing a quarterback that, you know, was never really living up to that first round hype that he got taken from the Miami Dolphins. Then he gets, uh, comes over to you guys and, you know, not even a starter at first, but when he gets the opportunity to start, he has looked lights out essentially since he has got that starting job. Uh, yeah, I definitely, even like yesterday, it wasn't too bad. It was kind of just like, there was like a lot of pressure. He wasn't at his best, but like, I definitely think that things to come will be much better because like the first two years, he like 
shocked everybody and kind of just showed that he was actually a dog out there on the field. Yeah, he, I th- he proved himself. I think another big thing, Ice, especially from the week one takeaways and everything, is the NFC West. You know, every single team in the NFC West did win week one. I think it's like a big thing too, especially in week one, not to just overreact for anything. You know, it is just one game and it isn't, you know, there's still 16 games left in the season and everything. But would you say that the NFC West is the most complete division in terms of the best team and the worst team in that division? Yeah, no, all four teams are really good, I think. Uh, it's going to be kind of unfortunate that one of them's going to miss the playoffs. Come on, Derek. Well, with the expanded playoffs this year, we can actually have every single team make the playoffs, right? Cause oh, yeah. There's, yeah, so yeah. there could be a possibility that every single <laughs> NFC West team does end up making the playoffs. Now, I, I would be very surprised if yeah. that does end up happening. I think that would be very Because they're going to start knocking each other out like, it, through like divisional games, I feel like. Exactly. I would be uh, I would be stunned if that did end up happening. But I do think that it's, it's a very likely possibility that at least two of those teams do end up making it out of that division. As you guys are seeing here, the defensive line pressure for us. And that's something I really do hope the Seahawks continue to have success with. You know, our defensive line had a lot of changes this past year. And I think the player I was most excited to watch was Daryl Taylor. He was our second round pick last year. And, you know, a lot of people didn't really know what to expect out of him. You know, he was coming off of being out the entirety of the last year. But in preseason and in training camp, he really did flash throughout the entirety of the time. You know, you kept hearing from anybody within the Seahawks training camp that he was one of the best pass rushers that they were going to have for this upcoming year as you throw a absolute laser almost for a touchdown. But that is something I'm super excited to see. But I think the big test for us this weekend is going to be up against your wide receivers. I think that the wide receivers that you guys have in A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, you know, we talked about it last week with Spoto about who was the best wide receiver duo within all of the NFL. I personally will always take Tyler and Metcalf. But would you say as a Titans fan that you think that Julio and A.J. Brown is the best duo within the entirety of the league? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, they they just got to get it together. It's not – it's more – I feel like the play calling just got to be a little bit improved and they'll be just as high-powered as they were last year. They had, like, the third best offense, like, points per game-wise. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, with one of the worst defenses ever. Yeah, and and if they had any type of defense, they would have been like a real Super Bowl contender. And talking about uh, just play calling as a whole, as you guys can see, Derrick Henry trying to fight into the end zone right there. But just talking about play calling as a whole, you know, how um, different was just that one performance that you saw in terms of, you know, you guys are having essentially a new offensive coordinator for this upcoming year. Do you think that it's just going to take a little bit more time for him just to kind of figure out, you know, how to use his team's strengths and weaknesses? Uh, yeah, Todd Downing is the offensive coordinator now, and uh, he was like the tight ends coach last year. And I don't know, like I saw like similarities to what they wanted to do, and I also saw like just differences. I feel like the Titans, like they just had like their their set game plan, and they always like stuck to it, no matter like the like. I remember they came back from down like twenty one last year against the Browns. They didn't win, but like it was a close enough game to where it was like, oh wow, that was that was actually kind of wild that they were able to like stay and fight. Mm-hmm in the game, but now this year, like, once they were down, they kind of just abandoned everything that they had and were just trying to air it out. They're just, they can't be one-dimensional. That's really the, like, the thing. Yeah, and that was something I was actually really impressed with the Seahawks week one. You know, many Seahawks fans, you know, throughout the year, uh, you guys definitely probably started to see a, um, you know, like the whole like let Russ cook thing and a lot of the offense was just I feel like being forced to go through Russell Wilson but as the year went on you know we just really weren't in my opinion at least establishing Carson to anywhere near the degree that we needed to but that was something I was really impressed yesterday you know Carson he didn't get that 100 yard mark you know that most running backs are always looking for but he had 16 carries for 91 yards which is a really respectable game for any running back and there was just so much more balance in terms of, you know, the offense and everything. Because, you know, we had D. Eskridge on those jet sweeps as well. And I was just very impressed with our first offensive game. You know, I just felt a lot more balanced than any other Seahawks game I had seen in a while. 
And I think that's something that I'm very hopeful throughout the entirety of the year can stay, stay through because that was something at the start of last year. You know, the start of last year looked really good for us offensively. And then around like week eight to week 10, it started to go down. By the end of the year, you know, it felt like a lot of teams had caught up to us. Now, I specifically, you talked about the defense of the Titans last year and how it was historically one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Has the Titans made any huge steps this year to becoming any better of a defense, in your opinion? After watching the first game, could have been better, but it's like they kind of just retooled and got new players. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a lot of guys, like Adoree Jackson's no longer on the team. They got Caleb Farley in the first round. He didn't play like a lot, but when he was on the field, he was really good, mm -hmm. I thought, uh, just from what I saw. The pass rush was like the biggest thing that I noticed, like, they didn't get, like, a crazy amount of sacks or pressures because Kyler Murray is just, like, insane. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, they like, the line was moving. Like, last year, like, the Titans would just, like, rush, like, three or four people, and every single time, like, the line would not move. Like, the opposing team's quarterback would have, like, all day, and it was, mm -hmm. it was just not fun to watch. Yeah, and, so I think for the Seahawks, too, that was a big thing I noticed with our pass rush, you know, I think we only ended up finishing the day with three sacks, but I want to say like we had like at least like 11 or 12 pressures throughout the entirety of the game, which to me was a huge thing for us to be able to have success this year. You know, just having the quarterback under duress, it makes it just so much more difficult in terms of a quarterback, in terms of being able to, you know, have those easy simple reads to make i think ice too that's something like huge in madden as well talk about the importance you know obviously madden is such a huge blitzing meta of a game you know more often than not to be able to get somebody off of their uh rhythm you're going to want to send five or more people and blitz them how important for it in madden as well to is it to be able to get that quarterback or essentially yourself off of your own rhythm the most important like you can't force somebody into a bad read, it's going to be a long day playing Madden mm -hmm. because, like, it's just a game of, like, where people, even if you can hold people in the red zone, that's fine, but if you want to get stops outside of the red zone, you need to get pressure because any, like, player who's an elite player is just going to carve that up once they see, like, coverage every single play. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, you got to mix it up and, like, whether it's, like, coverage, coverage, and then bring the house or maybe if you're bringing the house a couple times in a row you just got to keep throwing the the opponent off their game plan and i think that's uh for the seahawks you know when watching the seahawks throughout you know kind of the whole pete carroll era you know it was very standard just you know 4d line 4d line 4d line very rarely would you ever see the seahawks blitz or anything now i feel like it's a complete different thing as we see chris carson fighting for the touchdown right there as i anticipate him to do more throughout this entirety of the season but i think one of the bigger things that the seahawks have done in terms of just player acquisition is just jamal adams obviously last year it was a little bit indifferent in terms of jamal adams just because he was hurt for so long but whenever he was on the field he was just a game changer because he was essentially that fifth and that extra rusher and he's one of the best just overall like pass rushers in the league what do you think the Titans are going to have to do to be able to slow him down? Do you guys have, like, a third down running back that's really good with blitz pickup? You know, are you anticipating Derrick Henry to stay in there on third down and try to match up with him whenever he comes on those corner or those slot blitzes? Uh, last year, what actually what had gave the Titans the most success was a lot of max protecting. Like, they honestly, mm -hmm. I think they should keep going back to that because they have even better weapons than last year. Mm -hmm. And when you say max protecting ice, what what exactly do you mean by max protecting? Only having like two or three guys out on routes and keeping a lot of guys in the block. Because Taylor Lewan got hurt last year. Like even though he was pretty bad yesterday, uh, like he he was pretty good for like his first four or five seasons in the league. Like just an incredible player. And like he went down last year, like mid season, and they mm -hmm. kind of like adjusted to that because. When he first went out, like there was just a bunch, there was crazy amounts of pressure. So the Titans were five and zero, and then they dropped a couple games. Mm -hmm. But so I think that they kind of already know what they have to do if they're playing like a lot of great edge rushers, or even like Jamal Adams, like you said. Mm -hmm. But like they just know that they have to keep in extra guys, and they have the weapons to like they have 
Julio, they have AJ Brown, like they can just they'll get busy, like no matter what's happening. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing for the Seahawks. You know, our secondary is a lot different this year. You know, you know, we still have Trey Flowers, which is a huge, huge um, player for us in terms of if he can have a good season, it can really make us have a deep run. But DJ Reed, obviously, hurt throughout the majority of last year. Coming back healthy, though, when he was the starter yesterday, opposite of him. And then that slot corner position for us, it does kind of change between Marquise Blair and Ugo Amadi. And I was very impressed with whoever was on the field in terms of our cornerbacks yesterday. But I do think this Titans offense is going to be a lot more of a challenge than what the Colts offense was for us week one when it comes to the passing attack. And you guys are seeing here right now, and we talked about this a lot last week with Spoto, just in terms of the importance of, you know, essentially double dipping the chip before the end of half. You know, obviously right now Madden is a very pass-heavy game, and you're seeing Ice right now. He really likes this gun bunch offense, and, you know, it's a very, very good offense right now in terms of being able to attack all spaces of the field. And essentially what Ice is going to be trying to do here is he wants to score with just as little time left on the clock to prevent me from having any type of opportunity to take any type of deep shot. So Ice, the importance of the two minute drill is so more important than I would say it would ever be in the NFL. Why is the two minute drill so much more important in Madden than you would necessarily say in the NFL? Because in Madden, it's just, like, a lot easier to score than in real life. Like, you can you can also, like, decide when you want to score. Like, in this situation, I always want to score with, like, 20 or 30 seconds left on the clock. Mm-hmm. Like, if I get a free touchdown handed to me, I'm going to take it. But, like, ideally, like, I want this I want this clock to go down as much as possible. Because, like, Madden's just, especially this year, it's, like, a super high-powered game. Mm-hmm. And... Like scoring, especially with a like the Seahawks, like Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf, you can't give them a lot of time, especially when you get ball out of half. It's like Madden is a game of possessions, and you can't really like the Seahawks, aka D. Croft, they have the upper hand right now because even though I have the ball, they're gonna end up getting it out of half. Mm-hmm. So if they're if the Seahawks are able to match what I do in the first half, they basically have the advantage going into the second half. Yeah, I think a big thing that you mentioned there too, Ice, was just possessions. And, you know, when you talk about Madden, you know, you would probably say on average you're going to get around six possessions a game, give or take. And then when you're talking about the NFL, though, you know, you're probably going to have, as you guys see right there, Julio with a great route to be able to get seven right there. But you guys just know throughout the entirety of, you know, Madden, you know, that you're not going to get more than probably seven to eight possessions a game. But when it comes to the NFL, I think that average right now is around, I want to say 12 possessions a game, if I'm not mistaken. So you guys just know that there's going to be so many more possessions that you get in the NFL. It's a big thing why you see, you know, Madden players never punt or anything because, you know, we just feel like we have the pressure to where we need to score every single drive. And I know Ice right now, as crazy as it sounds, he's probably a little bit disappointed right there that he did end up scoring so fast right there. You know, if he was able to score, you know, probably with around like, you know, 15, 20 seconds left on the clock, he would feel a lot more comfortable defensively in this situation because it's just going to be so difficult for him to stop Russell Wilson, Tyler Tyler Lockett, excuse me, and DK Metcalf on this final drive. You guys are going to see right here that he does actually go man coverage on DK Metcalf, essentially just double teaming him. I try to roll out right there Jeff. with, um, try to roll out right there. Wasn't able to get out of the pocket with Russ. And I think that's a big thing with Russ this week is that I think Russ is going to be able to have a lot of success, essentially almost being able to do whatever he wants to do. I think that the defensive line of the Colts isn't as good Uh, excuse me, is a little bit better than what we're going to see for the Titans this upcoming week. So I'd be very surprised if he didn't have a lot of success in terms of being able to have these design rollouts like you guys are seeing right here. Now, Ice, now we obviously call you Ice, but your name is actually George. So when we call you Ice, you know, all these Madden players have these really unique names. And somebody in chat is asking about this right now. Why did you decide to be called Don't Care About Ice? What exactly is the story behind the name of Don't Care About Ice? I kind of just, 
I was making like a gamer tag and I like saw that all these people, like all these Madden pros back in the day before like I came around had like these like names, like, mm -hmm. like just like little like three, four letter names, like something that rolled off the tongue quick, like something that you could say. So I was like, all right, ice, but like I, my gamer tag obviously couldn't just be like ice. And I didn't have like any like crew or like guys that I labbed with. So I was like, oh, I don't care about ice because like I don't, I don't fold under the pressure. Like, uh, that's, that's kind of like how it came about. I really do like that name. I think it's one of the more unique names. You know, so many of these Madden players, you know, and that you guys will end up seeing throughout this show, you know, whatever their tag is within Madden, and more often than not, has something to do, you know, with a, um, you know, part of their name. For example, my name is Daniel Mycroft, so I just go, went by D Croft. You know, last week we had Spoto on here, and obviously his name is Michael Spoto, so he ended up just having his last name be essentially his Madden tag. You're definitely one of the few people in Madden that, you know, have that unique tag that, you know, just saw something that they really liked and decided to end up sticking with it. Uh, yeah, no, I feel like back in the day, like, that was always how it was. Oh my, Russ is amazing. But trying yeah. to make something happen right there with Russ. We're going to end up going down seven into half right now, though. Uh, definitely a really good offensive performance by both of us. You know, right here, you're seeing our potential of what we want to set our focus to. I think what I want to focus on is, you know, starting to throw it deep a little bit more. We haven't really got DK involved as much as I would have liked. And Ice has been very methodical moving down the field, so I want to set this to defend the medium pass. For anybody that does play Madden, that's essentially just going to give a little bit of a bigger boost rating to your players, which is essentially just going to be able to help you, you know, defend that medium pass. And then for me, being able to take more deep shots down the field. And Ice, too, you talked about, you know, not being a, in a crew when you first got into Madden. So anybody who's wondering what a crew is and when we talk about crews, essentially a crew, the best way of looking at it is just a team. You know, a lot of us, you know, Madden is a single player esport. You know, you don't really need anybody has help during the game. You know, at the end of the day, when you're playing these tournament games, it really just comes down to you being better than the other person. But your preparation for these tournaments is why you have these things called crews. So Ice, what exactly is a crew and how exactly does it help a person get better within Madden? I think you said a lot of it. Like, um, you were pretty good with it. Oh, pick it. Let's go. Oh, my but, God. But yeah. <laughs> um, so it's basically just my group of friends, Decroft included. We're in the same crew. But so, like, we just kind of, like, when we have our free time, we get into the lab, we play practice games, we try to find new stuff that gets us ahead of the competition. And it's usually been working out for us. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we've had plenty of success, and that's it's actually been amazing. Like, I feel like none of us would be where we are today if it wasn't for, like, the team effort. Because I feel like we all do so much that helps everybody out. Yeah, Just you... like the reps, iron sharpens iron type deal. Yeah, and so for other crews, for example, within Madden that you guys may have heard of. So there's essentially, I would say you know, four major crews within Madden. You know, the first one is going to be TNC that you guys do see on my face cam. Then the next crew would be 818. You know, 818 has had a ton of success within Madden. The next one I would say that's a pretty big crew would be EMB. And the next one would be uh, NFA. And essentially all these crews just essentially are just a group of friends that are just trying to help each other, you know, get better at Madden. I think that's like the big thing is that, you know, we are just trying to all get better at Madden. So you guys are seeing right now, I'm having a very difficult time stopping this Titans offense right now. Ice is one of the best passers within all of Madden. It's why he had so much success in this first tournament, ending up finishing third in the entirety of the world to when he ended up he ended up losing to the guy that won the tournament in John Bees. So Ice, a guy that has already had a ton of success within Madden this year. And Ice, for you, you know, talking about Madden, somebody's asking about this in chat. It's just about like your longer term goals within Madden in terms of like what you want to be able to accomplish. And, you know, for you, you have an amazing situation right now where you're going to be a part of a university on a college esports offer. So just talk me through about like what that means to you as a Madden player and getting that opportunity. And then what else for you personally, you know, your goals are within Madden? Uh, yeah, I go to uh, Northwood uh, university it's a school in michigan they basically gave me a esports scholarship couldn't be more thankful they're amazing uh, i basically just play in like these college tournaments for them and i get to go to school for them 
for, for free, basically. And it's one of the most amazing things that's ever happened in my life. And honestly, it's it's taken a big step in making me be su- more serious about this Madden stuff. Like, I was... I wouldn't say I was content. Like, I always wanted to win, but, like, it kicked it into another gear this year, and it made me realize that I can't waste any of the opportunities that I'm getting. And basically, the only goal I have right now is to try and win an entire tournament, like a belt that's, like, the the prize, I guess, like a championship belt, like in the WWE is kind of like best way to explain it. Mm-hmm. And like, I just want to be on the mountaintop. I want to be number one in the world. I was so close. I could taste it, but that's basically the only goal I have left now that it's basically paid for my college. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's been amazing. Yeah, no, that's an amazing thing for any of you guys that are wondering about that too. You know, there are so many opportunities within esports now that, you know, I think a lot of us never even realized about, you know, I'm talking to somebody that essentially just for his ability in Madden is given, as you guys are seeing right here, Julio Jones down the middle of the field. That's being so many great opportunities that are being given to people now. And, you know, Ice obviously able to essentially be that esports athlete and be able to represent the Madden community in that way, which is just such a super cool opportunity. And I hope it's something that keeps coming for all of us. As you guys can see, Ice has played a great offensive game so far in this Titans offense. You know, whenever Derrick Henry does get the ball, it feels like he's getting like almost like five, four yards of carry in this red zone area. And then Julio Jones right now is the big thing for me that has been very, very difficult to stop in this game. Now, I somebody in chat is asking you, what is your favorite moment within all of Madden? You know, when you first came into Madden, a lot of people would have probably thought of you as more of a, you know, of a talker, you know, you were kind of that trash talker when getting into Madden. That's where people saw you as, you know, is that your favorite moment against Skimbo? Or do you have like another moment within Madden that, you know, you would say is your favorite moment? Uh, <clears throat> No, nah, I wouldn't say that one because I lost, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I would say probably my favorite moment in Madden was beating the same, very same opponent, Skimbo, in this most recent tournament, mm-hmm. and it kind of like, it got the monkey off my back, like Steve Young said after he won that, that his first Super Bowl, like it like it was hanging over my head. I'd, I'd lost to him in two prior tournaments, and I'm like, come on, like, I just can't keep losing to this guy. Mm-hmm. I finally got my chance at him again, and I, I knew I couldn't just let it slip through. And I kind of, I just, I, I beat him pretty well, but like, it was, it was a close enough game, but it honestly helped me get over a lot of like the mental block I, I think I may have had. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that was probably amazing. Do you have a favorite moment uh, within Madden when it comes to like in-person events? For all of us, obviously COVID has been like so difficult over Uh, you know, this last year in terms of, you know, for Madden players as well, you know, we've been essentially forced to not be able to travel to any of these live events, you know, more often than not, you know, we would be able to travel to places like California, Orlando, Dallas to be able to compete in these tournaments. Do you have any moments where you say, wow, that's one of my favorite, you know, as DK, uh, we try to go deep to DK twice. He's able to pick it off twice there. You know, I wanted to get the deep passer game going, but we aren't able to get it going right here. I need here. my Titans to play like this on Sunday. Amani Hooker needs to go off. You guys are trying to see. I thought I had DK right there up top, but it looks like it was a little bit, a little. We just didn't have the space to be able to lead it further. But yeah, going back to you guys in terms of, do you have like a favorite moment? within um like an in-person event you know whether it be a dream hack or whether it be a um, um whatever it may be. it's not really like a specific one but i would say like just that first time when you're hanging out with all your boys because like men like we talk to we talk to everybody like all of our friends our crewmates like every day like they're mm-hmm. basically our real life friends we travel we do all this stuff like before COVID, I was seeing them like four or five times a year in different cities all around the country. And like, it was just, it was so cool. The, it was just amazing that like that first time when we were just, when everybody all hangs out, we usually either like practice Madden, go out to eat, play basketball. Just, we have a lot of fun. Like, it's just, I made a lot of like lasting friendships and mm-hmm. like it, it's amazing every time you get to see those guys. 
I think that's like a huge thing, you know, when you're talking about Madden and everything is these friendships that you're talking about. Obviously, me and you have become very close friends over our time in Madden. But I think like that's the cool thing about, you know, just like video games as a whole is like you really are meeting people that, you know, you're going to know and stay close with for the rest of your life. And I think that's really, you know, the like really cool thing about Madden, especially, is you know, we have spent all so much time together in terms of being able to. I'll pick it. Ah, good play. But we have spent like so much time around each other. So when we are finally able to see each other in person, which is very rare already, and then on top of COVID has made it even more difficult. It's just it's just such a great feeling to, you know, be able to finally see these people. It's really it's awesome. Like it's there's no better way to put it, like like I said, like I've I've built lasting friendships and like I'll know these people for for almost i don't know how long like i've i've known him for a good better part of the last five years because i started getting into men like my senior year of high school and like we're all kind of like like-minded people like we all like since we're playing men we all have like similar backgrounds where we played a sport or something like that it's just where we where we get the urge to love competing leo oh get there yes yeah, and you guys are seeing right here, part of this is just me kind of playing bad right now. I, uh, I've i been forcing the ball a little bit too much down the field right now. But you guys are just seeing how good of a player Ice is right now. I think the big thing, honestly, is, you know, these two receivers that you have, you know, we've seen a lot of Julio this game. But it is going to be a lot more of a challenge for our secondary for this upcoming week in terms of being able to slow them down. You know, I do think the Seahawks offensively will be playing a lot better than what I am currently right now in this game. But I hope not. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, but I would be very surprised that, you know, if this game wasn't more of a shootout, you know, more of the game that we talked about last week with Spoto, I kind of definitely thought that, you know, the score that I ended up as is 22-21. That was probably like a fair representation of the score. I do think that this week is going to be a lot more high scoring of a game. A big reason for that is just because, you know, there's just so many great weapons on both sides of the ball. You know, right here with Russ trying to hopefully maybe get a touchdown on the board and put a little bit of pressure here on ice towards the end of the game. But yeah, I would be very surprised that if this wasn't a high scoring affair. And I think ice too, you can probably agree with, you know, how you guys played defensively week one and how you guys have looked that it is probably going to be a high scoring game here in week For one. Certain. Oh my, no, I got the bad dive animation. <laughs> but <clears throat> what I was saying earlier, like, that's, I really feel like that's the reason why they lost. And, like, they've usually been, like, a great team at, like, adjusting on the fly. Mm -hmm. But, like, hopefully, like, if they see more loaded boxes, like, they they will open it up early. Because, like, they, like, their Henry is, like, elite. Like, really good. But they they were just, like, trying to force it too much. Like, they can't do that like, and expect success, like, they gotta, like, they have too many weapons to the point where they don't have to play a certain way, like, whatever the offense gives them, or the defense gives them, is what they should take every single time. Oh, my you guys are finally Rabbit gonna... Jenkins just got cooked. You guys are finally gonna see, I tried to take those deep shots earlier to DK Metcalf, I wasn't able to come down with them, which was a huge difference in this game right now, DK is able to come down with that one to know hopefully give us a little bit of hope at the end of this game but yeah i think this is going to be a high scoring affair and i think that you know the seahawks do match up really well against the offensive line and derrick henry because our front seven is very very good you know when you talk about bobby wagner too bobby wagner one of the elite linebackers in the league and then obviously jordan brooks i think is a phenomenal linebacker too you know he's one of our younger players our first round pick last year i think he's going to have a really great season throughout the entirety of this year and he already made some big plays in week one against the colts but i do think we match up very well with that uh the titans when it comes to their front seven but i do think you know stopping julio which you guys are probably going to see the stats after this game in terms of just how difficult it is going to be to stop these two just elite receivers as you guys can see right here now, A.J. Brown does get into the action. You guys are seeing Ryan Tannehill basically being able to do whatever he wants to do. But going back to what Ice did say earlier, you know, this is a very, very difficult Madden to be able to play defense. When you talk about, you know, I think Ice, you know, you've been playing Madden for longer than I have. But at least in all the Maddens yeah. I've played since Madden 18, you know, this is probably, you know, the most difficult Madden to play defense in if I'm... Oh, for sure. 
Definitely. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. I'm about to dish out some pain. Yeah, and you guys are able to see, you know, Derrick Henry, whenever he does get the ball, whether it be in the passing game or in the running game, that first guy, he's going to be able to... If he doesn't make a miss, he's at least always going to be able to consistently fall forward. And that's where I really hope that, you know, a player like Bobby Wagner is going to be able uh, to slow him down, you know. And it's not necessarily even just Bobby Wagner and Jordan Brooks, too, you know. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, I was talking about these eight-man boxes a lot, you know, that the Titans did have to go up against week one. I wouldn't be surprised if the Titans uh, didn't see Jamal Adams in the box a lot, essentially just leaving Quandre Diggs in a single high safety look for a good part of the game. Yeah, I agree. One thing I want to say is, like, usually, like, sometimes great players don't get their due in Madden. Like, they're just not as good as they are in real life. Derrick Henry. He's amazing, but they make him just the greatest player of all time on Madden. Like, if he gets the ball, he's just like, all these like viral stiff arm clips, they are just, I've never seen something more accurate. Like, Madden will just, he will get you some just amazing plays. He's actually my favorite player in Madden. And, and you, guys, life, you, you guys are going to see right here, I am showing the abilities. He essentially has this arm bar ability. And I know a lot of you guys, as you just saw him right there, you know, in Madden, you know, Derrick Henry really is going to be able to uh, run through any players uh, with will. But, you know, arm bar was essentially just gives you like the higher uh, success rate of stiff arms and everything. So just kind of saying how good of a player Derrick Henry is when it comes to that physical side of the game. The Seahawks are going to have a huge task in terms of being able to slow him down this upcoming week. Because that's one thing about the Titans too. I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, the Titans are going to try to establish Derrick Henry. You know, they are going to try to run the ball no matter what. You know, you can have Derrick Henry at under two yards per carry in the first half, but that doesn't mean that he isn't going to get the ball another 10 times throughout the second half as well. Yeah, he's just he runs different in the fourth quarter. It, he gets he might get his like real life X factor in the fourth quarter. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are able to see, you know, I, this would be a lot different of a game right now if those deep shots earlier to DK didn't didn't end up working. But I will say I wouldn't be surprised if this game scoring wise went into the 30s, you know. I think that just offensively, I think the Titans have a lot to prove after that week one performance. And I think they're really going to come out with a, a lot of ways in like a vengeance and just try to get essentially like a revenge game for essentially what happened last week. And then I just think the Seahawks are just look so good offensively week one in terms of what Shane Waldron did and everything that I would be very surprised if that didn't keep up the same way throughout uh, this upcoming week as well, because the Titans, you know, not as great as a defensive team, I think, as the Colts. I think that's all fair to say. So I wouldn't yeah. anticipate, you know, this one to be a lot high scoring of a, of a of an affair for this upcoming week. Hopefully, we are able to end this with a touchdown here too. I have a I've had a pretty bad game on my part. You know, Tyler Lockett right there fighting right there. We are just gonna try to get a touchdown and the game out. Ice, is there anything else you do want to say? Any more questions in chat before we do end up uh, having this game finish? I'm just praying that the Titans play like this on Sunday. <laughs> like, oh. I think that's a big th thing right there, Ice. Is, you know, Derrick Henry is probably going to score right there, oh. if I'm not mistaken. 100%. All right, last play of the game right here. See if we are able to get a touchdown to at least end this week off. Oh. DK, back of the end zone right there. Disappointing performance for myself, but I do think, you know, if those two picks, I didn't essentially force those to DK Metcalf, you know, it would probably be a tie game right now around 35 to 35. I didn't get my stops in the red zone this game either. So this game obviously could have been a lot different for us this upcoming week. I think week one, you know, Seahawks playing with the 12th man again for the first time in over a year. I think that, you know, I would be very surprised if this wasn't a close game, but very high scoring game. But one on one in at least my CFM right now to begin the year, you guys are able to see that Tannehill just played essentially a flawless game, one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the game. But if you look at these receiving numbers, I think this is the big thing. Being able to slow down Julio Jones and AJ Brown is going to be essential 
for this upcoming week. You guys are going to see the Seahawks stats right here. You know, DK did end up going over 100 yards, but a little bit slower of an offensive game for us this upcoming week. But Ice, I appreciate you being on the uh, show this week. Uh, congrats on all of your success so far this year within Madden. I wish you all the best going forward. And I am signing off, and I will see you guys next time. Go Hawks.